This is Swindler's Cove. Swindler Cove. We have Holly's here. Where we teach kids about evergreens and we teach them about, you know, praying mantis and how they come out with the different things. We teach them about ferns. We have a great array of ferns here. So we teach them about the spores and how they plant themselves over and over again. Yeah, basically, we, I'm just going to give you a, a brief um, tour of Swindler Cove. And within Swindler Cove, we have like several habitats. We have a wetland that they created here. So that's in addition to the pond and the garden that we have on the other side. Okay. So now we have like um, high tide. So as the water comes in, this captures a lot of the pollutants. So that's why they have this particular um, plant, Spontella, all through here. Mm -hmm. So this is a wetland and you have a lot of ducks, lady eggs here. Oh wow, so okay. So that's a great habitat. How you doing? You having fun? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. We have here a small waterfall. This is a small, um, small little waterfall we have here. Around here you have jewelweed growing and several other plants. So now I'll take you a little further out to the bridge. Right here is a picture of Swimmer Cove prior to the restoration that we did. So as we walk a little further, you'll see like how um, Roberto Clemente, everything was on this side in the Bronx. Everything over there is the same, but if you look on this side of the river, it's totally different. So we can walk a little more. As you know, this is the Harlem River. And these are some of our last natural beaches oh, right wow. here. <laughs> Did you guys put this up too? Oh uh, yes. Oh wow. They restored this whole area. Right here. And then you can see the wetland a little better from here. So as you have high tide, the water get captured here, all the pollutants get captured here. Then when it goes out, it stays pretty much in this area and kind of like cleanses the water. And we can walk a little more here. Um, you may not be able to see it, but if you look right here, this is a um, combined sewage overflow <laughs> where when our sewer system gets too, um, too flooded with water, they pour raw sewage into our waterways. They don't have to put it through the treatment and it comes out right here. So Whoa. like it also has a sign posted. If you ever see anything discharge coming out when it's not wet weather, then you should call 311. So this is, these are all throughout the Harlem River. So this is one way that we got to be really um, smart about our, our pollution because we could just throw this on the ground and then it rain and it go into our sewer system and end up in our water. So when wow. we look at who polluted the Harlem River, a lot of times it's us, it's us by just not being responsible with our products that we consume. Um, uh, here you'll be able to see some more photos that we have of how the area looked prior to the restoration work. tides coming in is bringing more food so you see like we had a birds that just we have American robins there we have some um, mallard ducks that hang out over here you see a capture of food now so a lot of times people don't realize this is a habitat for birds as well so provides food and a habitat for them. This is our boathouse right here. Oh, okay. So usually you go on a bike path and then you come down this way into the boathouse. But like I said, if you look, we're going on all natural beaches right here. Like, a lot of times you wouldn't even know that an area that looked like that with the boathouses <laughs> collapsing. Yeah. Could look like this. Could look like this. 
and better. And better, definitely. Recently I've seen some baby ducks out here, so like a lot of times this is a safe environment for them. There's, there's not really many predators in this area. So they have like a safe haven over here in Swimming Cove as well. Okay. So, yeah, we can walk up a little bit more. Okay. And we have a lot of community events here like during Halloween. Mm -hmm. We're strategically scaring kids here. Oh, just wow. Allowing them to enjoy the space and showing them that on holidays you can also enjoy green spaces as well. So. No, this is the primary place in which we did it. I bet it's a lot of fun on the Halloween. Of course, kids were overjoyed. Like they would come one time and they'll be scared. Then by the second time, they want to go again and again and again. You know? and then we have various habitats here. So this is one of them. This is for barn owls. So they have them for bats, for flying squirrels, for different animals that might habitat for areas. And one thing that people don't realize, this is a public park. So people can come here anytime and enjoy this green space. They don't have to come during one of our events. They come here every day. In the summertime, we're open from eight in the morning to eight at night, seven days a week. And this is the entry point into the beach. Yeah. We walk a little further, we have another area over here. They have something called resource petitioning where certain animals hunt at in the daytime and other animals hunt at night. Mm -hmm. So one of the animals that hunt at night is bats and there's a habitat over here for bats. We'll just walk around. Okay. How you doing? How you doing? Here we have the circle line passing swimming pole. And this is another picture of how it looked before the restoration. And you know, as the circle line come past, I always wonder, do they ever allow them to find out that there's some green spaces that they could come over here and enjoy? sign here that gives people a little information about the bat. You know, just how they how they utilize the habitat. When we had to sleep over at night, I came over here and I did see bats here at night. So they definitely use the habitat. Oh wow. It was a little scary at first but you know <laughs> like, one thing that I gotta remember is that bats help keep the balance with mosquitoes. Like as much as we don't like mosquitoes, that's who help us with our mosquito issue. You know? So with that, we could just walk a little more to the garden. And we have stewards that, that work out here all the time just keeping us beautiful and just maintaining this space. So, <laughs> you know, I give them a lot of credit as well. Here's a habitat for what they call the northern flying squirrels. Uh -huh. They call it northern flying squirrels. So this is a habitat that they set up in the park for them as well. So they pretty much caters to a large array of different animals. So do they use that one? Yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen a squirrel in there as well. Wow. Yeah. Only thing I haven't seen is the owl. I haven't seen the owl yet, and I haven't seen um. The, the um, wood duck that we have a habitat next to the pond where we're going now. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the wood duck myself, but other than that, I've seen a lot of rare birds. This is a public park. You can come here any day. And well, now I know where it is. Yeah. 